At his first full electric car, the e-tron is a technological tour de force. This battery-powered large SUV takes the best bits from the brand's conventional crossovers and blends them with next-level electrification technology. There's a beautiful cabin, and we're even promised engaging driving dynamics. What's not to like? The price? Well, you can't have everything. Electric cars may have come on quite a lot since you last looked. With this one, there's an electric driveline that uses a particularly large 95 kilowatt hour battery powering two electronically linked asynchronous electric motors, one on each axle, so creating the first electrified interpretation of Quattro four-wheel drive. The motor delivers a prodigious combined output, up to 664 newton meters of torque and total power of up to 408 PS. That translates into a 0 to 62 mile an hour time of 5.7 seconds and a claimed top speed of 124 miles an hour. But of course, if you regularly get anywhere close to either of those figures, you'll quickly decimate the official WLTP rated 241 mile driving range. Revert to the undemanding style of driving that tends to suit a large luxury EV and you'll find that realistic range returns of just over 200 miles are possible in between 14 hour charge sessions using the 7 kilowatt wall box charger that Audi recommends. If you're fortunate enough to find one of the rare 150 kilowatt public charging points, up to 80% of battery capacity can be replenished in just 30 minutes. Unlike its rival Jaguar, Audi fits air suspension as standard here and it imperiously deals with speed humps and potholes, plus it can lower itself to give the car greater stability at speed. You can also use this setup to raise the car by up to 72mm, giving it a surprising degree of off-road prowess. The e-tron's Quattro electric four-wheel drive system obviously helps here, but it's primarily there for terrific tarmac traction on slippery surfaces, being capable of transferring torque between the axles far quicker than a conventional mechanical system would be able to do. All the e-tron's drive systems can be influenced by the seven settings of its drive select driving mode setup, or there's an auto option if you want the car to make all the decisions for you. This Audi can also select its own level of brake regeneration, or you can dial that up or down yourself by using the steering wheel paddles. Talking of brakes, the ones here are excellent thanks to a clever electro-hydraulic brake control system that combines brake regeneration and the wheel brakes in one single pedal movement. Like much else about this car, it's very clever. You'd know this was an Audi. You might not immediately recognise, though, that this is an EV. Direct rivals like Jaguar's I-Pace and the Mercedes EQC intentionally deviate from brand styling expectations to emphasise their electrified remit. With the e-tron, Ingolstadt hasn't felt the need to do that, though we're told that its design is just as unique. From the side, you realise why this car hides its bulk so well. It's actually almost as long as an A6 Avanta State. A nice touch is the inclusion of charging flaps on both sides of the car behind the front wheel arches. This car's actually narrower than some of its key rivals, but Audi wants you to think the opposite, hence the use of this wide LED light strip connecting the LED tail lamps, a feature of all the brand's current luxury models. Inside, you get a familiar Audi-style cabin, complete with two central MMI touch response displays that blend into vast swathes of piano black trim. You view another screen through the four-spoke wheel, this one a 12.3-inch virtual cockpit monitor that includes a power meter covering the car's charging and regenerative functions. More screens can be added too if you pay extra for Audi's clever virtual exterior mirror package, which replaces the usual exterior mirrors on each side of the car with a little camera on a stalk relaying images back to a 7-inch OLED display at the top of each front door. Anyway, enough on screens. The leather stitch seats are superbly comfortable and position you fairly loftily, which is one of the reasons why forward vision is excellent. And there's plenty of interior storage, including this central open-sided compartment between the seats that's intended to have the feel of a light, sleek sculpture. It's unusual, much like this gear selector, which is operated by a handrest which appears to float above the console and is activated by a one-touch action conducted with either thumb or index finger. 
Okay, let's take a seat in the rear. Well, there's certainly plenty of room back here for a couple of six-footers to get very comfortable indeed. And you could say the same of a rival Jaguar I-Pace, but the rear section of this e-tron's roof doesn't curve down quite so sharply as that of the Jag, so there's less of a claustrophobic feel. We'll finish with a look at cargo space. Now, there's a compartment under the bonnet, but since that's only 60 litres in size, we'll ignore it and focus on the boot area. You get a powered tailgate, of course, which rises to reveal a 600-litre luggage bay, which also incorporates a useful underfloor storage area. Fold down the rear bench, which folds conveniently in a 40-20-40 split, and 1,725 litres of capacity is freed up. So here we are at the real start of Audi's electrified adventure. The company's cut no corners here, and there's a level of polish to this product that no rival luxury EV can surpass. As with rivals, we still think driving range will be a dissuading factor for many buyers. Cars like this won't be fully accessible until their owners can jump in and embark upon a five-hour round trip without a thought. You still can't quite do that with an e-tron, but if that's not an issue you'll find much to like here if you appreciate Audi's cool, understated, considered approach to luxury motoring. We're still not completely convinced that electrification is the long-term key to automotive sustainability, but Audi is, and proof of that potential, is delivered right here. <laughs>